at him. Arnold Schwarzenegger F1, that. Join me at one of my original places I come to do my commercial fishing, which is the famous Moorlands Farm Fishery. And it's an absolute pleasure to come back and fish this venue. I'm on a lake called Moore's Pool. Back in the day, there was only carp and silverfish, but now obviously there's some F1s, there's still plenty of carp, and there's loads of skimmers now. This is the first fish that I've actually caught. It took about 15 minutes to start catching or to get a bite. I've missed a couple of bites but it's an F1 and this video is going to be about fishing the long pole and obviously now we're in the winter time these fish can be really really tricky to catch especially at the start of your session that's whether you're a match angler or whether you're just pleasure fishing. So let's get in back and I'm going to talk you through the sort of tactics that I'm going to be doing today. Now, long pole fishing, for a lot of us, I think, it's one of them things where I think some people struggle with. And obviously, having the right pole, the right setup with your rollers and things like that is really, really important. But I'm just going to talk you through what I'm doing. I'm looking to fish today. I'm trying to be a bit selective. So I'm fishing with corn, pellets. I've also got some maggots. Um, I'm trying to just catch on corn at the moment and I've had two indications and that one bite because corn as we well know I know from past matches that I fished at Moorlands last year I fished a couple of qualifiers and believe it or not corn was so good even though these fish see a lot of corn the corn was brilliant um, I remember a match I actually fished on this leg I fished a Fisher Mania qualifier and I was totally convinced I would catch on meat I think, I think the, the rules were one or two tins of meat and I had me sort of the maximum meat I could have and also took, brought some corn. And uh, I was only just chatting to Jamie, the cameraman, and I, I sort of went back. And it was amazing that I was fishing with meat on the hook, catching a few fish. It was really hard that day because like, every peg was in. And I put a piece of corn on just off the off chance and it transformed my fishing. And I actually spoke to a friend of mine after the match. It was on a different lake. And I said, God, I put a piece of corn on. He said, Des, it was unbelievable. I put, I'd done exactly the same and it just transformed this peg. So never, you know, wherever you go, I know every venue is slightly different, but for me, Moorlands is one of them venues where corn can be massive. Anyway, let's talk you through the rig before I go back out. Uh, simple rig, I've got 13 Jura. Now I've ended up with 13 on, you know, I could fish with a, an 11, but I've opted for 13 because I'm being selective. 017 reflow mainline, a 414 F1 maggot, one of my all-time round brilliant floats for fishing with corn, maggots, like I said. If the fishing, if they don't sort of switch on to corn in pellet, I can introduce maggots. That's why I've gone from an F, you know, to like an excess carp float to an F1 maggots. We are in winter time now and maggots, as we all know, can play a big part. And it's, it's just under a top get deep, this lake, so it's quite deep. I've got a simple bulk of number nine nines and I've got two number 10 droppers. Nice and simple. That's how I set my rigs up at home, and 90% of the time, on a 4x14, I don't really change anything. Um, hook length for day, I've started on 013 to a 16 GPM. And I'm just fishing with a tiny little bit of corn. I've got some salted caramel corn, because it has got them lovely little chunky bits in. And I'm just hooking that down through like that. And I'm just literally putting in 6 to 10 pieces of corn with a couple of 4 mils. I'm not putting no micros in yet. I've got some fishery four mils in two mils, but I'm trying to stick with four mils at the moment. Now, one thing with fishing the long pole is your rollers have to be set up nice. Now, if you could probably see, Jamie will actually look at my pole in a minute. It's actually set on a slight angle like that. So what I can do is put my kit together like that, ship out, look behind me, and as I'm shipping out, I go from the second roller, I'm fishing with two rollers, which is really, really important. And as it gets onto the first roller, I then transfer the pole onto my legs like that. So I'm sat on an angle, as you can see, which I prefer because it takes all the pressure off your back 
and I know a lot of fishermen suffer from bad backs and that's why I do it. So then I transfer like that. So you come like a roller, your legs are a roller. And I can just push that along like that, get to the end of the pole. I'll just tap me bait out a minute. Just spread that little bit of corn out. Drop that in like that. And then I stay basically how I was so on a slight angle. So all the pressure of the pole is literally on my left leg because I'm right handed. And I've got my arm like that, I've got my hand there, and then I can just bring my hand like that by my left leg. That's how I fish, and I think it's the most comfortable way to fish with a long pole. And it takes a lot of the pressure off your back. You know, make sure your box is set up right on a, you know, your legs on a nice right angle. And you can see like that, I'm fishing 40 and a half metres, but I've also got the little mini dolly butt on. Again, that summer that I think, oh, that was a nutty bite there, missed that. I think it's really important. It gives you that little bit of, well, this pole, the, the, the 90 that I'm using is mega stiff anyway, but just putting that little mini extension on, that fits in the 13, 14 and a half and 16. And if I can, a lot of the time I fish with it because it, I think it just helps you. Here we go, little bite on the drop then. Oh, hello. That's not happy. I literally drop that back in, little dink. And the same, when I'm shipping back, get it on that left leg. You can probably tell from my bib and brace, that bit there is probably the only clean bit of my bib and brace because that's where my pole goes in and out. And then obviously shipping back, keep that section low. That's why I've got my rollers set up as, I, as they are, because I want to keep that section low. Back onto the rollers like that. See what this is going to do because I think this might be a carp. They might be a little bit lethargic because we've had a few cold nights now. They're still active. Might be a giant F1. No, that's a carp, that. So that's great. Just tap it in. Gutted. That was actually fouled up and it didn't feel like it was fouled up, that. I'd be amazed if that was fouled up. I'm gutted about that. I think that was a, I don't know, I had a little scale on there, but I didn't think it was fouled up. It's actually a proper nod. Right, so I'm just going to shift out now and run you through, I think, which are the really important things when you're fishing with a long pole. Now that can be 13, 14 and a half, and obviously extreme. This is 16 metres. Now I've put my top kit on, got my roller set up nice, and I'm now bringing it out. I'm looking for that pole to come off the second roller onto the first. Now, at the moment, that pole is now onto the one roller. Then I transfer that onto my leg like that. You can probably tell from my bib and brace that's probably the only clean part of that bib and brace because that's where my pole goes in and out on when I'm fishing with the long pole. And then use your leg as your roller. Now I'm shipping out slightly to the left because that helps. Don't try and go in front of you too quickly. So I'm shipping out like that. It's like the angle, you've taken it off your roller and then I bring it round as I get to the end, bring it round in front of you where you're fishing and then drop that rig straight down. And then that left leg is taking virtually all the weight of the pole. I've got my little dolly butt on there. Again, I think that helps massively. It stiffens the pole up anyway, which is really important when you're fishing the long pole, especially when you're fishing for F1s and tiny little bites. And you can just sit there nice and comfortable. Got my elbow Ooh, I think that was a little bite then the wind's just got up so I've got my elbow on my dolly butt like that just in a slightly I've got my right arm like that and I can put my left arm on that as well that's really important when it's windy definitely a few fish in me peg at the moment it's, like I said, it's taking me like 10-15 minutes to get a bite and I've just missed two indications I 
might have to take one of my little adjustments shot off there. And that gives you this, the stability that you want there. Let's take a little shot. So when I'm shipping back, again, onto your leg, first roller, onto the second, straight back like that, in the sock. Let me just take that. I might have to nip. Put a little bit of float grease on there. Because that ripple's just got up. about it being coloured even though I'm fishing a black tip float you can just put that on like that straight back out I said in like that bring it down off your second roller that's on straight onto your leg and use that left leg as much as you can and you can do it that quickly And this is when the sort of, the more expensive poles come into their own. There's no doubt about it. It makes fishing the long pole that much easier and everything out there is so much quicker to respond. But whatever pole you've got, try and ship in and out like that when you're fishing the long pole and try and hold your pole like that. I see people fishing like that. I mean, that is an absolute no-no. The amount of pressure that puts on your back is no good at all. Get it on your leg, arms like that, nice and secure, and then just concentrate on the on your float. When you're fishing with a short pole, you obviously it can, you can hold it one-handed. You know, no problem. When you're fishing long pole, it's so important that you take the weight. You know, the weight is transported, you know, transferred onto your your actual leg rather than your your back. Oh, a nice little bite then. Might be a few skimmers there at the moment. And I've just started the session really, like I said, just tap it in. A little bit of core and a few four mil pellets, no micros. Not at the moment, I'm just going to see how I get on. Start with those bigger baits. And if I have to, I can put micros in. Just going to see how the fish respond really. And I've plumbed up in several areas and everything really i can fish like four or five spots on different angles and they're all the same depth it's like a snooker table which is nice so that means if this peg goes i can move try another line with the same bait or i can like you know put different baits and i can put maggots in i might with it, you know feed some micros and try and find out what's best really there we go i think at the moment now we've just caught had that first bite and you see how I struck then, I sort of, I strike with my leg and my arms at the same time. I think Jamie, what we'll try and do, because I'm not sure how I strike like that when I'm fishing long pole, i just got a technique that I do. So I'm playing the fish now, still got it on my leg, look to get it on my first roller, so now I can hold my pole like that, and then ship it back. Look what you're doing, try and feel the pressure of the pole of what the fish is doing. Obviously, if it's not a big fish, I think that's an F1. Straight into the sock. Yeah, big F1, that. Got quite a big landing net today because there is some big old units in this lake. Bad angling, not got me to scourge right. A beautiful Moore's pool. F1 on a nice bit of caramel, sweet caramel corn. I think we're going to have a brilliant day. But it's really important, and I think people do struggle with that long pole. And I think there's a little technique that you know a lot of the anglers use, and I think it's important to pass that on to you guys, especially now we're going into the winter, because the long pole will come in more and more. So I've just squeezed that little bit of corn so it's sort of got the internal guts of the corn out if you like. Just makes it a little bit softer, which is important when the water's cold. I'm just trying to stick with sort of eight or ten bits of corn, a couple of four mil, soaked four mils. I've soaked them for sort of about a minute and drained the water off so it starts to break down. 
So that's off the second roller, straight onto your leg like that. Use your pot as a guide, because obviously you need to keep that pot straight. And as you get near the end, that's the time to start bringing it around to where you're fishing. And you do struggle. I think a nice little tip is, if you do struggle with the long pole, just at the start, don't try and fish on angles. Make sure you fish out in front of you. If you're fishing on angles, that's going to make it even worse. So I'm trying to fish, you know, I will go on an angle if I need to, but my main line is going to be in front of me because that's the, the easiest way of holding the pole on your legs like that. Once you start fishing on angles, it's a lot more difficult because obviously your body has to be in, you know, it's going to, you're going to be fishing off your legs if you like. My favourite angle is obviously slightly to the left of where I'm fishing because I'm right-handed. I just missed a bite then. So then if I start fishing to my right, I've got to like start doing this. And that's when you put a lot of pressure on your back. Because there's nothing to support your pole apart from your arms. So I'm not going to feed this time, other than indication then. Might have been an F1. I think what will happen, we'll get a few F1s and hopefully the carp will rock up later. And we can catch some of the old the old Moore's carp. And as you can see, Grant's done an amazing job here. Transfer, you know, trans, transformed it. And I will definitely be looking to come back and fish the matches again. There's some amazing, you know, fantastic sewerfish fishing. And I, don't, I just enjoy actually coming back. It's just nice to come back down the lane and see the lakes. There you go, little bite on the drop, little skimmer. Oh, little jumper as well, that one. Little swinger. Or is it better net him? Or he'd be off and wreck me rig. I'll put him straight back. Absolutely freezing cold, that skimmer. Just shows you the water temperature has dropped massively over the last couple of weeks. Let's just go a little bit of corn again. Let's try and get them nice little bits out. Just look it down through like that. Yeah, a couple of you know, a couple of tins of corn. If they start having it, just put a few four mils in. No micros. Micros. If the fishing's still good enough, you've got to see how it goes and make your mind up then whether you want to put micros in or not. I've been to a lot of venues recently when it's and you'll catch quite well on you know the baits you want to catch on. And then you have to introduce micros, maybe sort of after an hour or so, rather than doing it at the start. Depends how, how cold it is. We're not, you know, we've we've had a real up to now. We've not had a cold, a real cold spell. It's gone off a bit, but not like absolutely freezing. Of course, there's some fish there now. I'm not really feeding any other line. I've got my catapult out, which I always have. And obviously if I sit there for a while, nothing happens, I can catapult a few four mil pellets over the top. And a lot of the time that can get you, you know, get a few fish in the area. Definitely some skimmers there. Nice thing with core now. You can like drop it back in. Black out, black the bristle of the float today. I always find it so much easier to to actually see the float when it's um when you fish in that sort of silvery colored water with a black float it shows up amazingly and there you go lovely little bite then Oh, they're not 
that's all that is. A bit of a nodder. It's nice to just pull that pole around to the left. And that helps you then get the weight of the pole onto your knee. And when you've got it like that, I presume probably sort of halfway back, it's balanced perfectly then. So you can just put that on your first roller, bring it down by your sock, second roller. Another F1, I think that. I'll just put a little bit more corn in, probably put like 15 pieces in then. Oh, look at that for an F1. They're beautiful winter F1 fishing. Such an underestimated bait corn. That's got to be three pound that. Oh, look at that. They're beautiful condition that. Look at him. It's immaculate. It's lovely, lovely winter fishing. Especially when you get on a still day like this. It can be a bit more trickier to catch sometimes when it's still like this. That little bit of ripple's just gone. There's even an odd bubble coming up on my peg. No, put them 15 pieces in. So I have to go a bit careful. So then when you get everything nice and smooth like that, like that, you feel it just come off that second roller straight on like that. And people say to me, Jez, how do you how do you sort of how do you ship in and out so quick fishing long pole? But there is a little technique. So then straight onto that. Elbow just in from the end of the pole. Arms like that, hands around the pole. And then concentrate on your float. So I've not fed this cast. So I've fed like double what I've been feeding the previous cast, and I've got some bubbles coming out, so I know I've got to just got to go careful. So we're not in the, the height for winter yet. Oh yeah, oh that was a skimmer, a little baby skimmer that. So I'm gonna feed again now. Definitely a little baby skimmer that. That's probably what some of the fizzing is, little skimmers. It's got a bit of a twizzle on my flight. Ten pieces in. And because your sections are numbered, on the way out, once you get to your little system, to get it off your, your second roller, you can have a look what number you just go past. And you'll know then you're on your first roller. You don't want that bumping, you don't want that like banging as you come from your your last roller to your first roller. Oh, it'd be nice, oh yes. That tiny little indication that was. Lovely winter fishing. And I know them, when I get it down in that area there, I, can, I don't even have to look behind me really. I've got two, two big absolute rollers. And the second roller, I've actually taken the middle roller out. So I don't have to worry about the middle section. So I'm never gonna break down on the second roller. I'm only gonna break down my first one if I need to. So all them little things just makes everything nice and smooth. This might be a giant F1. Some huge F1s in some of these lakes nowadays. And this is the time of year, actually, I think, when you actually you do see the fish, you do see them massive F1s. Can't beat those F1 maggot floats, so 
use them so much now. Natural fishing, commercials, lots of different baits. Is this one of Grant's carps? I used to absolutely love this lake years ago. Used to fish, we used to fish with tiny little floats on here, like 4B10s in like seven foot of water with maggots. A little bit different nowadays. You could probably still fish like that in the depths of winter when it's, if it'd be absolutely freezing. There's probably a few too many little fish about now. And the weights are like a lot bigger than when I used to come. Come on, baby. I don't think it's that big after all. The line was wrapped around his dorsal fin. It's just come off. Another F1, eh? I don't mind. It's just bites, especially earlier in the set, uh, early in the session as well. It's gone tangled around his fins again. It's one of them that keeps. Oh, he might be fouled up actually. I'm not sure. Come here. Yeah, I winged him. Get a bit of that. Get a bit of luck in me matches sometimes. Not very often, admittedly. Yeah, just weaned him, look. No one is fighting twice as hard as anything else. So I know I've got to go careful. I'm just trying to read how much bait I've got to, you know, how much bait I've got to feed. One to keep the fish in me peg. Gonna feed like ten pieces there. It's a couple of those form mills. So then I can use my pole. My pole's numbered. So if I get to there, which then comes off the second, so I know if I get to section five and six, I know I'm on my first roller, so then I can just bring it up like that. And you don't get that bump. Little reference points like that can help you out when you're shipping out long and you don't even have to look behind you. I'm just trying to flop that rig over. It's a tricky depth this is. It's one of them tricky depths, sort of seven to eight foot. There we go. Lovely that. This might be a carp. So you can just bring that back like that. Try and keep it smooth. I think I'm glad I fish with 13 Jura. Probably got away with 11. 11's nicer because it's actually a little bit lighter in the pole. Great big F1, I think that. So I'm always thinking now, what do I do now? I look out, there's a few bubbles coming up. Do I feed again? Fancy feeding, but only like four or five pieces. Oh yes, look at that for an F1. I don't mind catching them. And they're having it, do you know what I mean? There's an odd bubble coming up. There's no point me doing anything else at the moment, apart from trying to just get the feed in to how I think the fish, you know, the best, the basically the most efficient way. He's not happy this one. Yeah, look at him. 
That's a good old F1, that. Built like a tank. Amazing that some of them look like they've never been caught. Perfectly hooked. He's probably getting on for... Mm, getting on for four pound, that. That wind's just dropped now as well. I can see me float. It's gone a bit brighter as well. I can see me float. Because I'm fishing in a gap of like two little trees. It's like a bigger piece of corn on again. So I'm always trying that. Little bits, bigger bits. Depends on what venue. Little bit of rain this morning, it's even easier to ship out now. So I just try and loop that over, loop that line over, it all goes down. And it's always worth just trying flicking it past. I've not done it yet because the fishing's actually starting to get really, really good. I did sort of think about setting a 4B12 up and I think, oh yeah, that little bit bigger piece of corn as well seems to have, definitely, them last two bites have been a bit more positive. I've just dropped that slightly to the right as well, just away from a cut, I'm only cupping in five or six pieces, but there's a few bubbles coming up and I've just, just gone about 18 inches to the right, just away from sort of anywhere I've put any bait. I'm really reluctant not to feed with a catapult because I wasn't expecting that to actually fizz today with the water being cold. But that could change. Another giant F1, I think. Oh my God, getting bigger. Water's still got a nice bit of colour in it. Look at that. You do a hell of a weight with them. Can't you get me on around that one? Try and hold him up one handed. Look at that from Moreland's F1. Oh, it's solid as a rock. Look at him. Arnold Schwarzenegger F1, that. Beaut. So I'm just going to feed that. I'm not, certainly not counting them, probably five to ten pieces. I'm just dropping that down and just fish slightly away from it. that up bulk basically drop your bulk where you want your float to go and then fold your line over and then that float and just let it all go slack don't do anything with it and you'll be amazed how many bites you get just as it settles by doing it that way especially when the fish are having a bit of a go Go on then. That one was just on the drop, that.
just folded me line over it, settled, little tiny dink. I thought, oh, what was that, a roach or something? Nope. You never know. Some of the tiniest bites could be some of the biggest fish. But the F1s are certainly playing ball at the moment. One of the smaller ones that I've caught, probably two pound odd. Everyone seems to be out smack in that corner as well of the mouth. So I'm just going to carry on like that for the time being. Just fishing just off my bait. Slightly bigger piece of corn. Seems to be working best at the moment. But we've only been going probably 45 minutes to it. Well, probably you know, an hour and a quarter. And the fishing is exceptional. I'm just trying to work out, is it better to just feed corn on its own? I'm not even going to pick a catapult up at the moment. I think in that depth of water, with them still being quite active, I think I could have an absolute nightmare with them coming just off bottom. So I'm just trying to feed a bit of corn. If I can just get away with corn today, I think it'd be absolutely brilliant. I might have to just introduce a few four mils just to get them rooting around again. But as I expected, corn is a really, really good bait. Just had a couple of little bites. Sorry, a couple of little bubbles come up by me float. Now, if that's an F1, then it could be a world record. And as the day's gone on, I've had a mega days fishing. But fishing just off, just off rubbing potting in. Because there's been a few bubbles about, even though the water's still cold. They've had a right good go today. Definitely not a two mil pellet day. Definitely being either, I've not really gone back to four mils. Corn, just tapping in, between five and 10 pieces of corn, fishing slightly away from any bubbles. I have had an absolute mega days fishing. I think this is an F1 again. They're massive. Something I've not really done that much in match fishing, really, or any of fishing, is fishing slightly away from me, but I'll fish it past me. Oh my God, look at that for an F1. That is a fantastic fish to finish this film off. <laughs> Look at that brute. That is absolutely huge F1. Now the film might not do it justice, that. But that is a fantastic fish. Like I said, to finish the day off. Look at him. Let's turn him around that way. I'm sure you've picked up on some tips today. It's been a nice day today because the fish have still wanted to feed. That fish is absolutely freezing. Look at him. I'm not sure what weight he is. I'm not sure whether that looks as big. I would say that was probably getting on for six pound plus that. Of a Moreland's Farm F1. 
an absolute stunner. I've even enjoyed the film. Like I said, tapping, corn's been a mega bait today. And like I said at the start of the film, on this venue, corn is brilliant. It always has been. I don't know why, but I'm sure there's lots of venues you go to which corn could, will, be, will be a fantastic winter bait as well. Let's get in back. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe on the Preston YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.